Hi, I'm Michael Goddard. In this video, we're going to make a line follower robot. The code is only four or five lines of code, and uh, we're going to program that using the EV3 Classroom app. That's the scratch based code. Also, the robot itself was built using the instructions that come with the EV3 Classroom app for the robot trainer uh, basic robot driving base. So, let's get started. All right, so I know this is what uh, you really want to learn about and that is the code so there it is in all of its glory I'll kind of zoom in just a little bit more so you can see it real nice and cl clearly when the program starts I've got a forever loop and inside that forever loop we've got an if else statement if uh, the light sensor reading uh, on port 3 is a reflected value greater than 33 percent then we're going to start moving at uh, 20 and 5 uh, percent speed to those respective motors else start moving at 5 and 20. Now that's not going to mean a whole lot to you until you uh, watch the rest here and see you know how I came up with the 33 how I came up with the 20 and the 5 but uh, maybe you don't need that maybe this is all you need and in which case let's get programming. Hi thanks for watching what you are seeing here is a uh, EV3 bot um, it's following the line and uh, it's doing so at a pretty good pace there. Um, if you look here at the code, we, you can see that we're using the EV3 Classroom application and less than five lines of code here. So a uh, real simple line follower here. And if you look at the mat, we've got a nice clear mat. It's the uh, TCEA mat. And we have uh, just black painter's tape there to give a clear contrast, okay? So uh, just to kind of show you once again that code, uh, so in this video I'm going to talk about um, how I got these readings and stuff like that, but I know you're probably interested in seeing the code, so uh, we've got a forever loop and then an if-else statement. Um, if the, uh, the light sensor there is, uh, which is plugged into port 3, is at a reflected uh, value greater uh, than 33%, then we're going to start moving at 20 uh, and 5% speed on the, uh, the two motors. Um, else, so otherwise we're going at 5 and 20. So in this video I, I will t show you here in a minute about how I got those values. Uh, just once more talking about the bot. Uh, the bot is just the basic driving base uh, built in from the EV3 Classroom app using the, the robot trainer uh, moves and turns lesson. That's how I built that bot, so nothing fancy there. And the place where I put the light sensor um, was from another one of those lessons. I think it was the colors and lines lesson. Okay, so uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get those sensor readings, how to build this code if you're still new to the EV3 Classroom app, and um, also talk about how you can change some of those values to get different results. All right, so let's take a closer look here at the sensor. All right, talking about the sensor. So you can see it's right over there. Right now, the light sensor is on a completely white section of the mat. I'm connected to uh, the robot there uh, via Bluetooth. So you can see I've got that there so I don't have to mess with the cords or anything like that. Um, it's plugged into port 3 and you can see I'm getting a uh, light sensor, a reflected value there of 74, 75%. It's kind of toggling back and forth. Now I want you to see what happens when I put it completely here on the black tape there now that reflected value is down to 5% because obviously uh, the black material is not reflecting as much light. Um, what I'm interested in is not necessarily the, when it's on the tape or when it's completely off the tape, but rather when that uh, light is literally half on, half off. So somewhere around there. So I just kind of eyeball that. And when I look at this, I've got 38, 39%. I think when I did the... I did it earlier and I was looking really, really close. I had around 33%. So that's the place where I'm going to make the decision whether I want the bot, you know, if I'm uh, over here in values that are uh, lower than 33, so more onto the tape, then I want the bot, in this case, to turn a little bit to the left. When I'm clearly over here in the non-tape areas, so you can see really high numbers like 89% reflected value, then I want the bot to turn to the right. Not sure if I said that completely right. 
completely correctly. So when I'm over here, I need to turn to the left. When I'm over here, I need to turn to the right. And the way that I'm just uh, turning the bot is by uh, using different uh, power settings or different uh, speed settings, I guess you could say, uh, to the different motors. And so you can see we're, uh, if you kind of think logically through it, if the, the light re uh, reflected intensity is greater than 33%, so that would mean um, somewhere over here off the tape, so in sort of when it's reading uh, the white mat, then I want to send uh, more power to the left motor. So you can see I've got the 20 right there and less power uh, to the, the right motor. So we've got 20% over here on the left motor, 5% here. It's gonna make the bot uh, turn a little bit to the right. And then the else statement, if I'm uh, obviously on the black tape, I'm getting a value that is less than 33%, such as what I've got right now, nine and 10%, then I'm going to send more power to the right motor, less power to the left motor, okay? Um, if you are interested in seeing how to create this code, um, just as, you know, from scratch, <laughs> as it were, so uh, you probably already have a win program starts uh, command, but if you don't, you can always get it here in the events tab and you go up here to when program starts, drop that in right there. Then uh, to get that forever loop, we're going to go down to the control and bring in a forever loop. Then you can see here I have an if else statement, so I'm going to scroll down here to this if else and I'll drop that inside there. And inside the condition here, this hexagon type shape, I'm going to go down to my sensors and um, wow, I pretty much think it's the first one here. So, uh, and it is, I'll grab that and put it there. If um, on port three, because that's where I have the light sensor up and around into port three, okay? If we're less than, uh, so, so my value was 33 and we're gonna say if we're greater than 33, so start moving, I'll go up here to the movement. And I'm actually going all the way here to the bottom of that list, start moving. I'm gonna drop both of those in there and then uh, do some adjustments. And so I just did 20 and five, and then five, I'll tab over and 20. And that's it. That's how you can create those lines of code. All right. And uh, what we'll talk about next is um, if you want some different results uh, based on maybe what uh, the line looks like. Um, all right. So uh, let's just give you one more look at what uh, this is going to look like when we've got uh, 20 sending 20% uh, speed to the, the motor that needs to be spinning faster and 5% to the other one. Um, it's going to make it all the way around uh, the circuit here, and you can see it's, it's at a reasonable pace. Um, we're not going to miss any corners. Um, we can handle the straightaways and the turns, okay? So you can kind of see what's going on with that. You can see about how long that would take. All right, so now I've changed the 20 and the 5 to a 50 and a 5. And so what we're doing now is we're sending more power uh, to the left motor here and more power to the right motor here. And let's go ahead and see what happens when we do that. So those turns are going to be more, uh, I will not say erratic, but they're, they're, they're swinging back and forth. There's going to be a, a wider movement. On this particular track, we make it all the way around. We also make it around faster, okay? That might not be the case if you have sharper turns um, but there you go, that's what you get. And the reason is because you're sending more power uh, to one motor than you are the other, uh, and especially, you know, in this case, 10 times more power. All right, so you may think, well, if increasing the 20 was good, why not also increase the five? So now I've got a 50 and a 40, so we're still sending more power to the left motor when we need to, and still sending more power uh, to the right motor when we want to. Um, let's see what happens. So great on that turn, on that straightaway, but yeah, we just 
totally blew through that turn. So the problem is, is that the 40 and the 50 are so close to each other that uh, the robot's not able to make a sharp enough turn when it hits those corners. So might have to go back to the drawing board with the, the 5 and the 20. All right, so um, here's, I guess, one more option here. I've gone back to the 20 for the, the turning motor, and then the other one is a 10. So just trying to increase the speed just a little bit. So let's see what happens now. Handling the straightaway pretty good, just kind of sliding back and forth. But when it comes to the turn, you can see uh, our turns aren't sharp enough. That's because the, the sharpness of turns is uh, sort of dictated by uh, the difference between those two power settings. So, you know, it's a little bit of a, of a game you play. You want to increase the speed, but then you also uh, don't want to increase it so much that you go through the, blow through the, the, the corners. Um, but then you still have to have a, a significant enough difference between those two uh, power settings. So it really just determ depends on what, uh, what your course looks like. Um, normally, you know, slow and steady, I would say, wins the race. Um, because better to, to stay on the line for sure than to get off that line and, uh, and be penalized for doing so. All right, so in conclusion, uh, for the last one, I've taken it back to the 20 and the 5. And um, instead of moving the bot uh, clockwise around the, the circuit, I'm going to move it counterclockwise, but I'm going to put it on that inside lane there. And let's go ahead and run the code. And you can see we're still able to follow it. Ooh, barely made that turn. And here, oh, it's not enough. So, um, and then we're kind of off in no man's land over there. So, um, oh, and then we circled around and found it again. So, this is just as a reminder, uh, we're technically really not following the line as much as we are following the edge of the line. And based on whether or not you want to follow the left edge or the right edge, it's going to determine whether or not you uh, send more power to the left motor or the right motor based on your readings, okay? So, um, in all reality, this, uh, you know, this code is good and it, it's helpful, but if you want a better line follower, what you need is some, the next you know, stage of line followers, which is a proportional line follower. And a proportional line follower, rather than just having two situations where you're either turning this way or turning that way, it's going to um, actually look at that value, look at the, the reflected number, and if it's, if it's right on the middle line, then it's gonna go straight. But if it's, if it's deep here, you know, onto the white part of the mat, then it's going to make a sharper turn. If it's deep here onto the tape, it's gonna make a sharp turn. But if it's kind of maybe in the middle, you know, or kind of a little bit, uh, a little bit you know, more on, on the, the, the white mat, then it's gonna make a little bit of a turn. If it's more onto the black tape, it's gonna make a little bit of a turn. So basically have uh, different types of turns depending on the situation. That's a proportional line follower. And we'll be talking about that in another video. So thanks for watching, uh, like and subscribe, and uh, good luck building that robot following the lines.